computer. Okay, now I'm going to, sorry, I got to repeat everything I was saying. No, I'm not going to repeat <laughs> a single thing. You're back on, you're seeing that? Yep. Okay, so hey, everybody, we're recording. We're going to make a, we're going to win a Grammy this time. Speaking of which, and I see Otto's there, there's a movie coming out of Spat People. We get a full minute and a half scene in a movie that's coming out. So if it ever comes out, we'll oh, get cool. a bunch of popcorn out and we'll eat oh. it and we'll see what's <laughs> going on. I have a little clip of it that says for my eyes only, and I've only showed it to like 58 people. So at, maybe later on, I'll show it to everybody, but uh, uh, this recording thing. So what you're seeing here again is uh, a picture of a conditioning tank that is uh, tricking shellfish into thinking that uh, it's spring and they're getting ready for reproduction. And so what you do is you put these select animals in there for about six weeks and feed them every day and clean the tank every other day. And uh, the test, and I'm going to show you uh, what the SPAT folks have done in their algae room to, to aid with our conditioning process. We use, we're using a peristaltic pump that's dosing them uh, every day and giving them the right amount of food. And, and uh, the punchline comes at the end of this little talk where we do the spawn and see how our conditioning worked. Um, then what you do is, you. this is also actually, this looks like the spawning tank, but it's actually a, uh, a another conditioning tank uh, that they've, that, that they've opened up for, for uh, feeding. So we have, a. there's another one too. So the, tr the thing with a hatchery and conditioning is, you, you'll only get larvae from oysters that spawn and give off eggs and, 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 and then you collect them. So all of these are our golden, our, our golden hens, our golden geese. Uh, without them, we, we, we can't make anything. So having a lot of shellfish that's in conditioning mode uh, is, is really what runs the whole operation. And and in order to do that, you need a lot of algae because you can't do this uh, from natural water. There's not enough algae to feed anything. So we have a lot of algae growing right now. I have to say that it's, it's how do I say this politically correct? It's the, it's the second year in a row that everything is running the way that it really should be in a hatchery, which means that your algae is up to full production in November and December. Uh, your, your conditioning brood stock, which takes six weeks, so you had to have algae, a lot of it up and ready six weeks before your first spawn. And now it's January 30th and we did our first spawn, which is nice and early. I mean, that's really early. We are going to do our traditional Valentine's Day spawn. Uh, so that's two weeks, which is really interesting. As you look at the calendar, actual Valentine's Day on the 14th is a Tuesday. So if we did a spawn on a Monday, that's the 13th. We still have a full, we'll have a full, a full hatchery of of larvae in all the conicals. So we're running this, we're gonna do, we did this spawn today. We're gonna do the Valentine's Day spawn, probably the Wednesday, the 15th, one day after Valentine's. So everyone can, can have a nice Valentine's Day with their significant other. And then we'll break out the, the shellfish and the caviar uh, like they do at Hog Island and, 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 and do another spawn. So we'll be running larvae continuously for the next couple months, uh, which is pretty exciting. So that's another conditioning tank. This is interesting. You know, one of the reasons why they're giving us the ability to do all of this early work in the big hatchery is their mandate uh, this year in the big hatchery doesn't include any single oysters or any clams. Uh, it just, its mandate is for spat on shell oysters and these things that are in here. Anyone guess what that might be in that little cage in each one of these cages? You can't see them. So I don't know how anyone would guess, but they're ribbed mussels. Okay. So these ribbed mussels, there's, we're getting a lot of, uh, there's going to be an interesting amount of grant money. Hi there, Judy. I see you peeking around. 
there's going to be a lot of, uh, of funding for very interesting things like rib muscles. Who wants rib muscles? Well, you can put ribbed muscles in uncertified water to help them clean the water. You can't put oysters, you can't put clams. I don't think you can put scallops. Scallops are an interesting thing because they're not considered to be a shellfish that you eat raw. So some of the restrictions aren't the same for scallops, but you can't put clams or oysters in uncertified water because of poaching pressures, but you can use rib muscle. So it's all new research. Nobody's doing it yet. Uh, and they're actually kind of difficult to, uh, to culture. So we're learning this. So there'll be the, their hatchery is for spat on shell rib muscles and probably scallops. And so here's an interesting picture. You might not make out what this is. This is a, a setting tray that's in the hatchery. And all these little dots down here are all scallops that they produced in November. So they did a fall spawn. I think there's another picture. And, and some of them are actually quite large. They've been feeding them all throughout the winter, uh, which is something that Cornell hasn't done in uh, about 26 years. Uh, we've always run scallops on ambient flowing seawater. So this is a real testament to the new hatchery that it can keep these scallops well fed, alive and growing uh, from November, December, January, coming into February, waiting for ambient water. So this is this is really spectacular that they have this this batch of of fall spawn scallops. And, and I, I'd like to continue that work. Uh, that, that's uh, Josh and, and Bart that were at the beginning that I didn't record, but I'll have to add that. They, they've been doing this kind of on their own, which is kind of neat. Again, another beautiful, I took this picture because the, the algae is just such great colors and densities and, and really looking spectacular for the end of January. And everything's up to pretty much full full uh full capacity except for these these are the uh photo bioreactors and not all of them are up to full capacity but this one these two are you can just barely make out if you look at this little this is algae from the top from the bottom all the way to the top there's a little airspace above here, but th this is full of algae that's growing. It's a touch screen, it's monitored, it's self-cleaning, it's self-dosing, it's all these neat things. So there's four of them in the algae, in, in the new hatchery. If you haven't seen it, come on by, we'll give you a tour. And uh, these are really quite special uh, to have. Again, their stock cultures are looking beautiful and 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 nice and colorful, and everything's nice and clean. Uh, very very professional. Uh, out on our docks, we're doing a lot of things that people don't do. Uh, commercial hatcheries will spawn this early. Uh, I don't think there's any uh non-commercial hatcheries that are doing production spawns this early so that's new for us even this early january 30th but something that pretty much nobody does these are that's these are all floating upwellers and we have three of them running all winter long with with surplus seed from 2022 uh we've got 32 barrels of seed running uh and this is a this is one that's running, and I just love this this motor here, and this whole floating upweller is something that was designed by SPAT members. It's it's a motor that's out of the water, out of Granger catalog, custom built, and it just runs spectacularly well. The one that was in the in the last uh, video uh, last picture. I don't know if I can back it up. I'm missing a part of my. Uh, I won't. I won't screw it up. I'm missing a part of my screen that I, I chopped off my screen, so I don't have my back arrow. But this machine, the one, this this motor that's running on this floating upweller, there's a second one running. It was in the previous picture. Has been running for five years without breaking down. And and the normal uh, motors that are in these floating upwellers are pretty much 
uh, the powerhouse ice eaters and we go through them like potato chips. I think we have like 40 <laughs> broken ones on the uh, on the workbench and these aren't. So this is something I think we're going to try sharing with other groups to see if they're interested in, in this design. They really work spectacularly well. Now you might, and a lot of people would say, well, why are you running a floating upweller in the winter? They're not feeding. And I would argue that the water hasn't really been that cold and it looks like there's a lot of turbidity in it. I've seen new shell growth, what looks like new shell growth on the seed as I cleaned all of these uh, machines last week. So I would argue that fact, maybe in maybe in the next couple of weeks, it's really gonna slow down, but it's still a, a very convenient way of holding all of these barrels of seed. They're in, what are you drinking, Pat? Is that, Chase, you guys are whooping it up there. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's after five o'clock, I'm allowed. Oh yeah, yeah, I know you are. You're allowed to do whatever you want. That's, you know, that's by the way, I have I have uh, new growth on on my seed from last year. Yeah, just, I mean, the last two weeks really has not been that cold. So you know, I I was uh, I was talking to a fellow uh, the other day who knows quite a bit about all of this stuff, and he was saying that he want he I have to send him pictures because he says that there's a that at a certain temperature, the enzymes shut down, you shouldn't be getting any growth. And it would be news to him if anything was growing. But you know, you you, you can look at some new feathered shell growth. It's just not that cold. Uh, the, the creek hasn't frozen. We haven't even gotten skim ice. So everybody's uh, gardens at the Marine Center are, are looking fine. Uh, I, I'm not saying winter's over. I would give us another good solid six weeks of of cold weather coming up but uh it's been very mild so far uh now in in our algae room in the spat algae room we we there they finally got their way and convinced me to go uh allow them to put in a solar roof on our algae room and hey. yes and because of that uh, is that was that Frank saying yay? Yes, yes, it was. Frank? Yeah, so Frank, Frank, and, and Charles Peck, and Roger Cornell, and John Norris, and a couple others have been really going gangbusters in the spat algae room, and you know the new solar roof. So we, we, whenever I say we, by the way, I know that it's a kind of collective we that it's. They're doing all the work and I'm saying we, uh, which is fair. I mean, you know, uh, they <laughs> blew the roof off. Uh, I cleaned up I cleaned up some of the mess. I, I took it home and built a, uh, a little log cabin out of it. I'll show you later. Uh, blew the roof off and put in the polycarbonate uh, triple wall and it really made a huge difference. I mean, it, it's a noticeable difference in the density of the algae and, and the cultures. And so their, their stock cultures and their carboys are all doing great and there's lots of algae. So you can see the what happens with the difference between this system, this is called the Milford batch method. And what happens is it's a lot of maintenance. Uh, so, there's Roger there, and and we've been, we there's that we again, <laughs> we've we've been growing algae, and this is a tube that has been fed down. You can see how much is being fed by the by the lines of scum that are left behind. And so what you do is you fill this up, you put in your algae. It grows dark over a couple, maybe ten days. It, it gets to a, a density that you can feed it, and then you literally feed it out until it's empty. Clean it again, refill it with with new, clean, uh, and sterilized seawater. Re-inoculate it with new algae and grow another batch. So it's a batch, and you use it a batch, and you use it. It's very different to uh, what happens with the C caps and the bioreactors, which you can top off continuously with new media. And what's happened with all this algae that we've been growing, and actually this is a picture of the oysters that we spawned today. 
uh, as they were a couple days before. So this picture was taken, I think, on Friday. Uh, so just before they went into uh, into uh, pre preparedness for spawning on the Monday, you can see the new growth here. Well, now this is what you should be seeing in your condition stock, but this is kept at 70 degrees and, and eating this high test algae. So it puts on this nice big feather of growth, and that's a good sign that they're feeding well and they're 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 growing but still for all that they put on this feather of growth they're mostly putting on gonadal growth reproductive growth and and the test would be to spawn them and see how they did and i i won't give it away yet uh you can't really see that well this picture but these are clams we brought in a, a cohort of clams everybody seemed to love getting a little bag of clams to go plant in there, whatever. And I want to continue to do that. I mean, we gave away about 2 million clam seed last year. We're going to, we're going to try to do that every year and, and increase the size of it. Uh, we're going to start working with clams again. It's, it's not really part of your garden per se, uh, because, you know, you're three and four years into breaking your bull rake stale on, on it <laughs> like Pat did. But, you know, if you keep planting them in your favorite creek and don't tell anybody, uh, I, I actually went clamming in our spot at the Marine Center for these clams. And I found a lot of clam seed of a planting I did. And I hadn't gone back on it in a couple of years. And they were okay. about, the, you know, they were about the getting to be about the size of a quarter. So it was about two year old okay. planting. So it does work. And we're going to, you know, we want to continue to add shellfish to our gardens. It's just that you can't grow the clams in, in cages. You have to just in the, in the fall, free plant them so that, uh, so that, you know, they can bur burrow in, in the winter and get some insulation value. Uh, but we are working with clams, so we'll do a. We're going to do. We did this oyster spawn. We'll do a four uh, Valentine's Day oyster spawn. Then we'll probably do a clam spawn, and then we'll do a third oyster spawn just for fun. I spent last week uh, with some members that came in uh, it, that uh, helping me out to build new mesh barrels for this big seed in our floating upwellers because uh, I went through. 32 barrels of seed last week, and almost all of them were on fine, finer mesh barrels. So I went through all of them, cleaned them up, and put them all on new coarse mesh barrels. And everyone would say, why are you culling oysters? It's January. Well, it's because I didn't do them when I put them away in November. So they won't be touched until March now. But I will tell you that leftover seed is to, to you know, for new members coming in, we'll give them a jump start on seed. For people that want to fool around with overwinter seed as part of your, your allotment, uh, there will be, uh, we've done it in the past and uh, it's beautiful looking stuff. So we, 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 we will have overwinter seed for, for folks to play with. I, I'm also doing a little bit of an experiment because we have the 32 barrels of seed running, but I also have something like 50 nets at Goose Creek of, of really nice seed. So I'm looking to see what the difference between uh, seed grown in the floating up well, well, well or, or overwintered in the floating up weller uh, as opposed to seed growing at Goose Creek in lantern nets. My wife just came home. Hello, long day. She's gonna be milking. <laughs> Out. That's Kimmy. There's Kimmy. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't have any. Well, I'm Hi guys. There's Kimmy. She's back from school. Counting days. Hey, one, day left, one year left of teaching and then then it's going to be strictly gardening for the rest of her life. So uh, the the nursery has the pumps put away the, the, the your famous uh, oyster washing machines put away. Everything's in 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 kind of uh, hibernation mode, and and uh, hopefully we'll have a nice early spring. Uh, this is the Tiana line of all the oysters, the hundred growers all crammed together on on the line. And Tiana uh, is here at the Marine Center, all nice and stored away. There's all the gear that got washed up on the 
Tiana that uh, I, I brought back or people didn't winterize. So I got it all labeled for everyone, all of our hoses. Uh, in the workshop, we're in, we're, we're building all kinds of things. We're fixing up some motors. Uh, people are building some new, new tanks. We're working on, we got a nice little addition to our fleet. We got a barge and we're, we're, uh, setting up the barge with, with the, with the haulers. We're making a tabernacle for the mast. Here's the new barge. It's not really new, but it's, uh, it, that's going to go to Goose Creek. We're going to work Goose Creek a little bit more this year than we have in the past, uh, bunch of years, really since COVID, you know, it was the year before COVID that we stocked, we stocked Goose Creek, Goose Creek grows wonderful oysters and oyster seed. So we stocked it all just before COVID, then COVID came and nobody could work. And so all of that stock didn't get tended for two years. And boy, I tell you, when you go to tend something that hasn't been tended in two years at Goose Creek, it's like jiffy pop and you pull up the cages and they're full of the not full but yeah. loaded with giant crazy looking oysters so now we're going to be a little bit more uh so we're this had where the brick is there's a mast i think i have it here there's the mast that goes up with a nice hauler and a lot of rigging and the boom and all that stuff We've been building, uh, we, there's the we again. We've been building uh, shucking boats this winter that are up for sale. If anyone wants shucking boats, we can custom color them. We've got, this is a new technique of stitch and glue. I'm so proud of spat people. Spat people are the greatest people I've, I've, I've ever met because they're so uh, ingenious with, with how to, how to do a better make a make a better uh, mouse trap? So this is a the shucking brand new beautiful shucking boats uh, made with stitch and glue technique with, that doesn't require a form and they're really coming off the press quite fast. Blue green. I just went to Home Depot and got them all new paints. So we're going to be uh, making shucking boats if anyone wants them for displays or for their homes or whatnot. Here's again that the, the uh, trunk line of this floating upweller unit, and that's the conning tower that gets the motor placed on top of it. Uh, really quite ingenious and works fabulously well. We have a repair to do on the boat that we were using. Apparently, it, it, uh, the repair we did <laughs> wasn't very good. So we're going we're gonna to pay a little closer attention to the repair, but we have a brand new uh, sweet pea uh, restoration that we're going to put in the water and we'll keep this one out. So if anyone wants to do any boat working, oh, we were in the, we were in the North Forker. There's me in my, my famous uh, work clothes um, and Richie there and, and whatnot. So that was in the North Forker uh, harvest edition, which was a nice little article that happened. Okay, so now here's today. This is this is today. There's Frank and a team. There's a team in training from Oyster Bay. Apparently, I got some inside scoop on Oyster Bay. And Frank and Flower and Sons, uh, they they separated the the harvest element of Oyster Bay uh, uh, of Frank and Flower and Sons. They sold the hatchery. They gave all of their hatchery equipment to the town of Boys Boys Bay. They turned the hatchery into a marine, a, um, a restaurant, a marina, or something like that. So uh, these folks that are in training at Cornell are going to be building a new facility using all of uh, Frank and Flower's old old gear and starting up a hatchery there. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, they got to see in action uh, what we did. So we took our oysters in. Uh, that's a picture of, it's very hazy because we we took, it turns out to be in condition mode, 32 oysters uh, that that we spawned. And we did the spawn today. And the ones that were in the previous picture were all males in the men's club in, in, a, in a cloud of smoke like Bogart. Well, I'm, we're re-going through, Kimmy and I are going through all the Bogart films. We're on the Maltese Falcon now. And you watch Bogart. He's, he, he lights a cigarette like every five minutes in his movies. I mean, 
you, you feel bad for the guy dying of cancer, but boy, was he an endorsement for cigarette smoking. I mean, the guy was, so that's what our males look like. It looks like they're in a, in a, in a high school uh, bathroom. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and the ones in the beakers are female. So for 2023 of our 32 oysters, we got 12 males, 16 females and four no show, which was pretty darn good. That there's a couple of things that happened about that. And here's our picture of our, our, our new cohort. Uh, first of all, you can see the very bold marking patterns and there's very interesting color morph differences here. You have the white with a black line, white with a black line, couple black with a white line. And you know, you can fool around with this color morph. What we're doing is we're not so interested right now in the color morph as much as we are, as you're looking at these oysters right here. And I should have put something uh, size wise to give you a size, but these are, you know, three plus inch oysters. And the interesting thing about them and our new little approach to spawning is I know exactly when these oysters were born. They're, they're two weeks away from being exactly one year old because these are the spawn from last Valentine's Day. Wow. So, so we used the fastest growing that we could find amongst our cohort of this 2022 uh, batch from Valentine's Day. And we used them today for our spawning and they spawned spectacularly well. So the cohort from here, the 2023 uh, spawn uh, are from oysters that didn't even reach an exact calendar, They're virtually a calendar year old. How'd they get to be so big so fast? Mine are about two because, inches. Because last year, we we did the same thing where we took the 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 biggest oysters we could find from what we believed was 2021 mm -hmm. and spawned them so what we're trying to do is target an elusive maybe concept of a, a, an allele or on a chromosome that that is coding for fast growth I don't know if it really exists, but here's here's where the thought came in. Every time you do a spawn of shellfish and you're sizing the seed out as it's growing, you always get this like five five percent of them that are much larger than all the rest. Just right. like when you get your oyster seed, if you get a, a thousand oysters, you might get from that thousand, you might get 50 or 100 that are always bigger than the rest. They're, the, they're, they're just your biggest ones. Now, why is that? Is it genetics? Is it competition for food? Is it, 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 is it a spatial issue? And when I say it's elusive, I mean, I, I, I was born a runt. And it and my mother was like five feet tall, so I got her genetics more than I got my dad's. He was the kind of burly uh, six foot guy. Maybe I got a little bit of his of uh, uh, of his. I can't call myself brawny. I call myself scrawny. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. I never, you know, I still weigh the same I did as I, when I was in high school. So I I, I I've got a weird genetics. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pro proponent of thinking that genetics play quite a role in physiology. Well, they and, probably do. You know, the, with these oysters, what we were trying to do, my concept is this. And by the way, so last year, I don't know who's on this and a lot of participants. I don't know if, if, if Carrie is on this or who's on this. Uh, oh, that's a different Carrie. Uh, last year, I gave a SPAT member, uh, let me turn this off. I gave a SPAT member the first seed of the season it was like first week of May or the last week of April. I said, Carrie, here, here's some of, here, here's a thousand seed 
of our fastest growing oysters that we have. And he grew them at the Marine Center, which isn't the greatest water. I mean, it's not like Mattituck or a lot of places that uh, that have... I mean, Gilgo Beach, you got good growth there, right? Yeah, no, we do good. We do real good, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't say that Cedar Beach has the most stellar water. And he grew, a th he grew in 10 months, grew a three-inch oyster that you could open up and it was perfect to eat wow. in, in, in eight and 10 months. So the thought was from this interesting 5% of really big ones. If you were to take those and keep them and use them for brood stock for your spawning stock, could you could you shift the size of them uh, of the fast growers? Could you shift to either getting a, a larger percent of them or even a bigger oyster? Now you're always getting five percent, but they're five percent that are even bigger than the year before, and so you're shifting that percent of big ones over to the outlier side and getting larger oysters to be not the mean you'll never get them to all be you know you i don't know it's very interesting we had the greatest growth at tiana beach new members were growing oysters that were three inches by october wow and so I'm hoping that there's a genetic element to it. I, I'll open this up for discussion in, in a moment about how people did that are that are here that can open up a uh, discussion on how their survival and their growth was of this cohort of seed. But I will tell you uh, what I've witnessed was remarkably healthy uh, seed growing well not super high mortality and and growing to uh, a really nice sizes. So uh, we're going to see again. This is a great test because now we have and I I dried them off. I marked them all 2023 male and female. And we're going to keep those as a uh, as a uh, archived brood uh, out on the flat so we can start paying more for <coughs> our spawning. Uh, there's everybody in the spawn. If anyone wants to join a spawn, uh, I know that sounds a lot like a proposition that I shouldn't be making uh, <laughs> while recording, but um, we will be doing a Valentine's Day spawn. It probably will not be on Valentine's Day. That's a Tuesday, and a, 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 it'll probably be Wednesday, I'll let people know, because if you want to come to the Marine Center and 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 I think we have a camera crew coming, I think Vanessa is going to come and 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 she was there last Valentine's Day. It's kind of a neat tradition uh, and we could make it a party uh, in the hatchery and get some food and beverage and whoop it up on probably the 15th. So I'll get an email out when it's going to be probably the 15th of February. Uh, and you don't have to bring roses or chocolates or anything. You, you could just show up. Uh, that's a that's the spawn in progress. And so if you're wondering what that is, that's a rubber gooey duck voodoo icon perched on the side there. And uh, we were we we queued up. I had my phone and the and the Bluetooth playing the Barry White. We had a uh, cryogenic rubber sperm in the other corner. Uh, I mean, let's face it. Uh, uh, it could, it wasn't boring at all because these, uh, the punchline is this and Frank and maybe Charles are on, 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 I know Frank's here today, but the conditioning technique that the SPAT members are using in, in their algae room, it's a combination algae room and, and conditioning room works fabulously well of these 32, uh, 28 of them spawned and, they spawn vigorously. And so the, the the technique of getting them ready for reproduction, the fact that we could put it on a calendar date, set up the technique for, for spawning them and getting them to spawn. They were finished spawning by 10 o'clock in the morning, which which is fabulous. It, 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 they were definitely 
uh, ready to spawn. And there's a real balancing act because as it gets closer and closer to that, uh, that moment when they want to spawn, they can be very hair trigger and you can lose the spawn by just going home and they spawn at night. And so we wanted to control it. We did control it. It was a wonderful spawn. Uh, we're, on Wednesday, we're going to do our drain down. I can't tell you how many we got out of it until Wednesday, but I could send, I'll send out an email for folks to know how we made out. But it, it should be around the tune of, you know, 60 million or 100 million larvae. And we're going to raise them up and, and see how they do. And we're playing all kinds of uh, tricks on, on the process of them. And we'll, we will continue to have these discussions every month and, and keep everybody apprised. Uh, probably do a little bit more formal broodstock conditioning, spawning, and, and post-setting uh, lecture for you. As, as we'll decide. I didn't see what the poll was, whether people want to do any live ones or just prefer doing Zoom or hybrid. We certainly would do hybrid because people, truthfully, I don't want to go out. I'd rather sit in my living room and do this. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody said that, that that it's not as comedic, but, you know, all right. You know, I could probably put on a, a, a little clown suit or something and, and dance around, but we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Oh, just so you know what I do at home. I built this log cabin out of recycled uh, vineyard posts. So if anyone wants me to come to their house and build them a little log cabin out of out of old vineyard posts, that's 100% recycled except for the roof. Everything cool. was recycled. That cost me 80 bucks. It's nice. my wife's garden shed. I took the old barge and I and, uh, that we had at Goose Creek and I dismantled that and I built a log splitter shed out of that and used everything. I love to recycle. There's a picture of Shuck and Jive. That was at Greenport, uh, uh, the Green Hill Kitchen. But if anyone wants to see Shuck and Jive, there's an email going out. We're going to be at the, uh, the Greenport Brewery facility in Peconic next Saturday, three to six. There's an invite for that. And that's me looking like uh, I really wanted to be in Woodstock, but I didn't. <laughs> there, that, that's that. So that's that's all. I, let me stop sharing the screen. And here we all are. Anybody that's here. So, you know, that's a, a, basically what I can tell you is we added a, a lot of interesting innovations last year with the with the floating up Weller motors now with the algae room roof. Uh, we're, we're, we're building all of our contraptions. We're going to continue to, it's part of the fun of, of, of SPAT. Whose dog is that? <laughs> and your little dog too. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, but um, if anyone wants to, you know, get involved with any of the building aspects, we've got a big crew. They come in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, year round. And uh, there you guys are. Look at you. Grew great oysters last year. And we're going to continue. And we'll find your old ones. They're, they're kicking around somewhere. It's going to take a little while to to uh, sort everything out come spring. But but it, there's Kimmy. She's watching everybody. And so, uh, you know, to, to me, 2022 was one of the best growing seasons we've ever had. And now we're going into this new season where we have our first spawn before February. And so, you know, we're, it's shaping up to be another good year. I'm an optimist. I'm hoping that the, that, that the water quality stays good, that we're not going to have some kind of crazy harmful algal bloom or whatnot. You can never tell. We're all farmers, so we don't know yet. Uh, and by the way, you know, warm winters are not particularly good for bigger oysters. Uh, that There's more disease pressure in warmer winter. So there's nothing wrong with February be, being ungodly cold as long as March is. And, you know, I can do with a little, I can handle a little bit of cold weather in February, but, uh, you know, the way that oysters are growing, you can outpace oyster, uh, disease issues. If you get a fast growing oyster that's edible in 12 to, to 16 and 18 months, it's, you're not going to see the mortality to, to, to uh, these disease pressures. So this is why we're working with the genetics. Uh, we've got a couple, uh, 
I would like to work with more scallops. That's going to be a challenge for 2023. We have a team that's very interested in keeping going with growing scallops. We have a couple members that actually grew scallops all last winter and you know, they got some nice, nice uh, meals out of it. So I would like to add scallops to the garden. Uh, it's a challenge. It's much harder that to, to not only to culture them in the hatchery for seed, but to culture them in your garden for, for stock. They're not the same critter as an oyster. So we're looking at that. We are going to continue with the clam process. And uh, we should start pretty early. I mean, I think at this rate, we're going to be looking at getting people settled in uh, to getting seed, certainly in early June, as opposed to 4th of July. So we'll wow. put that up a month earlier, maybe even earlier for some people that are hardy and want to get, you know, their neoprene uh, chaps on and go out in the water in, in, in April. Uh <laughs> And so, Kim, what, one, uh, I'll add a vote for the scallops. I mean, growing up on the Great South Bay, having them be decimated, you know, anything uh, we can do to sort of explore what may uh, help us. Uh, well, it's and, and, and it's not it, it's very important because what's going on right now is this uh, kind of going into the third year of a scallop meltdown uh, because of some issues that. You know, there was just an article that came out uh, saying, <laughs> of all things, oh, well, it's climate change. Oh, yeah. OK, we, 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 we're, we're coming to grips with something that is not, there's no true one reason why scallops have melted down for the last three seasons. It's a combination. And certainly warmer water temperatures are playing a role. But there is a, there is a, uh, a virus in in scallops that's exacerbated by warmer temperature. There's predation that's exacerbated by warmer temperature. Uh, so by growing more scallops with the spat people, we can start also looking at some of the genetic elements. Survivors of warmer temperature and scallops, if we can grab those and spawn them, we might be able to you know, Florida has a subspecies of, of our bay scallop. It's called Argopectin. Our scallop is Argopectin irradiens irradiens. And it's not because we're hiccuping. It's because the genus and species, the subspecies is irradiens. To make it different than Argopectin irradiens concentricus, which is the southern range of, our, of, of the bay scallop. So, you know, I think there's going to be a big push for making a, 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 our bay scallop more acclimated to a warmer temperature. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. Nobody's giving up on scallops. Uh, it's, it's been a challenge for the past 28 years of my life, 30 are the scallops and they're very, very finicky critters. And just when you think you got a handle of them, something else comes up. So what do you do? You keep at it. You have to keep at it. And so we will keep at it. And uh, folks that are interested in, they're, they're, they're not the same. They, they take a, I've have, I would say five or six spat members that are doing a pretty good job with scallops. I probably have a hundred uh, that say no way I'm not doing those things they're blah blah blah, blah. so if, if you want to be one of them that keeps trying by all means it, we, we'll we'll I think we will be able to help you out with with seed uh, I have to address however something that's going to come up which is to amend your uh, your collector's permit to allow scallops with the DEC which we can do I think we can do that just fine so um, what else can I tell you? Uh, we're, we're very active every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If anyone wants to come by for tours or you want to help out, I know everyone's scattered all over the place, but uh, and, and we can wait for nicer weather. But don't think that we're in the winter and we're not doing anything. This is actually our busiest time of the year in the hatchery. So uh, 
you know, and you don't have to do that, but you're cert everyone is certainly welcome to come by and check out what we're doing and, and the like. So uh, it was great to see so many people came on this thing. See, if I did this live, uh, I don't know where it, I'd seat. I'd seat everyone. So we could probably do hybrid. I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm still not. Hi there, the the uh, the the Kate and 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 uh, all the Wests and all those things. I was just talking about the West family and the Kate McLeod West family because somebody said to me they came in today. Uh, they said, do, if, do you need anything built? Do you need another tumbler built? And I said, no, I'm going to buy everyone those little bingo things like the McLeod uh, Wests have for their families where they're turning this little five oysters in a little uh, bingo collector thing. I've got pictures of you guys. Uh, no, we're going we're gonna to have an exciting year. We never like to sit on any laurels. We like to always be... Uh, thinking up new things to do that that keep us vibrant and so uh you know tiana was full full capacity last year i expect it to be this year we're going to add systems where we need to add systems i think it would be very interesting to come up with a homeowner tumbling system uh you know you can go out and buy a cement mixer but i think you can also build we can build something to to replicate that helps tumble oysters that is like basically spackle buckets on a little thing you know it's it's not 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 overly difficult so what else we got anything anyone want to chime in before we go have dinner yes no hi kimmy hi oh you, you made it back everyone made it yeah back. it took a while to get home yeah, 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 yeah. That's, you know, that's the other reason to just sit in our living rooms with computers and not go anywhere. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of, I'm not spoiled with it. I mean, I practically flew in the water the other day. I tripped on, I tripped on a cement block on the fo floating upweller and I was no. about that close for going in and everyone was looking at me like, oh, that would have really kind of ruined your day. And it's always never about me it's always about the cell phone isn't it you know mm -hmm. that's all we care about anymore is dunking our cell phone over the drink and uh you know the body can handle it but the cell phone only gets a couple times when uh when it flies into the bay right frank you didn't you right. Pick right. Yours? yeah so you know probably i i have a question uh can we set up a regular schedule for goose creek we're going to uh we're we're definitely going to uh, make Goose Creek. Now that we've got this soon-to-be fancy new barge, we're we're gonna uh, be much more active, and we can absolutely set up a a, a team on schedule of Goose Creek. Uh, there's some fascinating things that hi Janet. There's fascinating hi. things that happen at Goose Creek, including bottom planted oysters, just that are just spectacular looking. Uh, we're going to have a lot of oysters to, to, to play with. I think we can do some interesting reef, you know, everything's semi on the sly. You can't talk about building reefs, for instance. You can't mention reef because the permits required for building a reef are out of this world. But planting a whole bunch of oysters around your creek that you just Johnny Janie clam seed oyster seed. We can start doing a little bit more of that. Uh, I I'm I'm usually really bad at just letting huge amounts of stuff go out for free planting, but I'll tell you, 32 barrels of seed left over, and we've got the new stuff coming down the pipe. We're going to have to start ditching, you know, oysters. Uh, I I hold on to them because I know I'm going to get people that say, "Oh, I lost my oysters and they flew off of the dock and the, this froze and this this and and we'll be able to be generous and get make sure people are growing good oysters for themselves." There are certain people whose names I won't mention that eat so many oysters that they run out of their oysters all the time. So you know <laughs> that, that uh, we can't let that happen. You know, people have to get their oyster fix. Uh, Too late for that. 
Yeah, too late for that. Well, we'll <laughs> talk about it, Pat. We'll talk about it. So, so, so Kim, yes. you, hey, uh, Janet. how you doing? You thinking of using any other artists besides uh, Barry White and see how the spawn goes? Today, I, I actually, today was a fascinating day for me. It was so busy in the, in the spawning room because I was also playing DJ on my phone with the Bluetooth. So I played, you know, the, here's what happened. I'll let you know. Thanks for asking. Uh, because what happened was, let me see if I can remember this. Um, the males started spawning at 26 degrees Celsius, listening to Robert Palmer's Some Like It Hot. The female started spawning at 28 degrees to um, Bruce Coburn's "Lovers in a Dangerous War in a Dangerous Time." Now, go figure that. Now, I've had scallop spawn with offspring. You got to keep them separated. I've had no show on anything where you're playing Cajun music because of gumbo. They're all thinking that they're <laughs> next in the pot. Uh, and I couldn't find on my phone any Stan Getz. Uh, so that was out. There was no Bossa Nova, but I played some, uh, I played some uh, Gilberto Gil, uh, which is pretty close to, to the old style Bossa Nova. So I think that music, nothing was happening until we got the Bluetooth mic uh, uh, speaker working. And then all hell broke loose. So it's a lot of fun. You know, I, I have to commend, I have to commend the, uh, the, the, the conditioning team, including Frank and Charles and Roger, they did a, the, their technique for conditioning fish works like a charm and it makes spawning events fun because what, what can happen is if you, if you didn't do it right, it's worse than watching the grass grow because you end up going home at four o'clock and nothing happened. And that's very discouraging because, you know, you spend six weeks conditioning these things and then spend all day and you don't that's get what? Spend. what you really want is like, I commend the, the crew that's conditioning. The technique absolutely works. The trick is now going to be, not becoming victims of your own success where they're so hair trigger that you, they spawn when you're not on top of it. So, uh, so far so good, knock on wood. We've got a, a, a calendar full of spawning events coming up. I, I, I will get information out for folks that if they wanna come by for it and we'll, we'll turn it more into a party. Today we had lox and bagels and cream cheese and who knows, donuts aren't a big hit. I get a couple dozen donuts for everybody and I go home with like a couple dozen minus two. So I guess people don't like donuts. I don't know. So we'll figure that out. We're going to do a whole bunch of grilling this year. Uh, we made an oyster stew in, I don't know, when was that? October? Was that October, November? Where we, we, we made an oyster stew on the grill. And it was really great. So we're gonna we're gonna start doing some culinary action. Uh, I'll get a couple of videos of some culinary things. Uh, gonna make an oyster stew tomorrow. Maybe I'll record it. I'm also making. Uh, I keep saying every day now when I'm gonna do it. I'm not sure when, but I'm going to make a for very formal shucking video. And I say formal because I've got a lot of new equipment. I'm gonna take my time with it with the right audio and the right uh microphones and all not like the old one i did out of my kitchen on my cell phone so uh there's a whole bunch of things coming up and and i'm i'm looking mm -hmm. forward to 2023 i think it's going to be a spectacular year good anybody else want to chime in or do you want to want to say good night good night good everyone had fun we had awesome participation and i and and that's that's wonderful. And we'll debate whether we're going to do it live. We'll do it. I'm sure we'll always do a hybrid. Right. Anyway. Folks can't come from Manhattan to this thing. Good. Excellent. Good. Thank you, Ken. Good. Stuff, Ken. Good. Thank you. Stay in touch. You. And we will also Thanks. We'll see you next Saturday at the, at the brewery, three to six. There you go. <laughs> Bring your cheapest date. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm always my cheapest date. Yeah. Good. Good to see you. Hey, Eric. Excellent. Hey, you doing, Tim? Thank yeah. you very much. It was awesome. I just want to mention one thing about this year's crop. We, I must have pulled in December from, and I have my, the new batch from this year. I have them in the north end of Old Fort Pond, uh, Chinnacock Hills there. I tell you, I must have had about 100 oysters from this year's crop that we were better than bar oysters and delicious. Yeah. I, I, you know, the thing but, having such a, such a early oyster to eat is the shells are like perfect and they're not even yeah. that fragile these ones i found the ones at tiana weren't fragile fragile at all they weren't breaking apart they no, were fine. not bad at all lily white on the inside nice meat uh if it's the genetics and we're running with it we're going to have a spectacular oyster for uh for the future and that's what we're looking at so that's a good tip so you got a hundred to eat and they were just fine and they were a, ca a calendar year old so awesome all right kim good, good. See you in a couple we'll be good there night, stay in touch good good little house oysters. who's little house oysters who's little that's house? uh that's eric that's Captain Eric? E. Little yeah, house. subsidiary of uh, Happy Oyster. Oh, awesome. I'm wearing my Happy Oyster shirt. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, Bart, Bart has the Wi-Fi where he was, and he was on the road coming back from you guys working. So he's going to catch up with you later. All righty. Good, good. See you, everyone. Uh, hold on. I need to stop my recording, cancel. Uh, where's record? Stop video. Yeah. Where? The end. No, that's video. Where's recording? Recording. Stop.